Hello everyone, Professor Phil Travis, and it is our final week here at Eastern Oregon University, History 448, the History of Modern Russia. Uh, it's week 10, and uh, we've finally come to the, the conclusion of this course, and I must say I hope this course has been uh, a fun, interesting, and effective learning experience for everyone. I hope that uh, the readings and the lectures have given us a look at this really important history, the study of Russia, um, really in the, in the modern era, particularly in the 20th century from the Bolshevik Revolution to present. I hope that the lectures, I hope that the readings and so forth have touched on a wide enough array of, uh, of information and material to have provided this, this, to make this class a really interesting experience for everyone. We had readings that touched on cultural elements, readings related to blue jeans, to gender and sexuality, to the gulags, to um, the experience of Stalinization on Russia during uh, the, the purges. We've had readings relating to the larger themes of politics and foreign policy and the Cold War. Uh, so I hope the class has has been an, an exciting and effective learning experience. And I hope that the readings and the lectures have really helped to give us a, a, a wide picture of the importance and significance of the history of modern Russia. And I've enjoyed, as always, uh, many familiar students in this course. As always, I've enjoyed uh, this class with you. And I hope to see some of you in a class of mine in the future. Um, I know my spring term courses, the U.S. History 4480, the U.S. History 480, U.S. 20th Century to 1900, 1900 to 1950, and then uh, History 202. I'm also, also offering the spring. Uh, the fall, I believe my offerings will be uh, History 112, World History Part 2, and uh, History of Modern Germany, History 437. So I hope to see some of you that haven't taken all of, all of the history classes with me yet. I hope to see some of you back in another history class in the near future. And I hope this has been a fun, exciting, and enjoyable experience. This week's lesson, uh, we are gonna look at the age of Gorbachev, and then we're gonna take this to the age of Putin today in Russia in the 21st century. So we're gonna look at Gorbachev, his sort of attempts at reforming the Soviet Union during the 1980s. We'll look at some of the ways that those attempts might have been successful in certain respects in ways in which those attempts failed and in many cases would be attributed to sowing the seeds and the ultimate collapse of the Soviet Union. So we'll be looking at Gorbachev, the age of reform, and we'll be looking at the collapse of the Soviet Union. We'll then take it up to the 21st century and talk about the era of Vladimir Putin's Russia. What we've really witnessed in, uh, in this current period of time as we've witnessed Russia sort of reemerge on the world stage as a very significant, uh, if not controversial, international player. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia really sort of, you know, fell by the wayside to some extent. They, their government uh, became embroiled in corruption. It was a highly problematic economic time for the country following the collapse of the Soviet Union. And uh, the period particularly of Boris Yeltsin proved to be a period of, of difficulty in the, uh, in the attempt to transition Russia to a functioning democracy. With the era of Putin, where Putin has you know, seemingly really become um, a modern era sort of uh, authoritarian leader in Russia, you've seen uh, Russia sort of enter the international stage in a way somewhat similar to what you might have witnessed during the Cold War. Now, there is a big difference, of course, between the Cold War and, um, and the current age of the 21st century. And the biggest difference is that during the Cold War, we were talking about a bipolar world, meaning that the, the Soviet spheres of influence were not sort of consistently incorporated into the global world system as a whole. There were some exchanges, there was some diplomacy, uh, there were some exchanges for you know, selling wheat to the Soviet Union, for example, in exchange for allowing for greater immigration of individuals like Jewish individuals from the Soviet Union. There were these types of engagements during the Cold War, but 
generally speaking, you were talking about a, a, a bipolar world in which there were effectively two global spheres of orbit that more or less were not, um, were not interconnected into the global world system. Today, of course, Russia, uh, like China, um, they are, while both authoritarian, in the case of China, you might even say totalitarian entities, uh, they are nonetheless incorporated into a capitalist global world system. And they are engaged as a effectively, effectively a normal player in the world, albeit, you know, we've seen in, uh, in recent times, we've seen, of course, the United States putting sanctions on Russia for its ac actions in annexing the Crimea and its actions in parts of Ukraine. Uh, we've also seen, of course, a great deal of controversy surrounding um, uh, cyber warfare and uh, election interventions on the part of Russia. Uh, so Russia has very much emerged onto the world stage in the 21st century as a very uh, uh, significant foreign policy concern for the United States. And in many cases, this is highly controversial. We've seen, of course, allegations of Soviet-led um, murders of, of journalists, investigative journalists in Russia, uh, of political opponents, oftentimes with um, nerve agents like Novichek, uh, for example. Uh, so we've seen these types of, of, of actions that have been linked to Russia, which are highly controversial. You've seen an attempt to annex, or you've seen the annexation of places like Crimea, a long-term part of the Soviet Union in, in, in previous history. We've seen the Soviet Union's involvement in Syria become particularly controversial alongside that uh, of the United States. And so we've witnessed, the world has witnessed the Russia really become a, a more significant world player in the 21st century. And so today, or this week, we will be reading from chapter 23, 25, and 28 from our service book. And we're going to be looking at the era from Gorbachev and the really significant era of reform in the Soviet Union and ultimately the collapse of the Soviet Union. And we will then take it up to a conversation about more current affairs surrounding Vladimir Putin's Russia. So chapter 23, 25, and 28 from service. Of course, discussion forum, as always, research paper is due Tuesday of exam week, final exam, study guides up for the final exam, final exam is due Sunday by midnight. I am going to set up a little Zoom office hours, it'll be a 30 minute session where I will be in the a Zoom room. I will probably, uh, I will probably schedule that for Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, the time, I still have to work on the calendar for the time, so let me find a good time slot, and I'll email everyone, and you'll find a Zoom link for the office hours in modules, and so you can come in there and talk to me about the paper, you can come in there and talk to me about the class, about the test, anything you, you, you wish to talk about as related to the class, so be looking for that this week. Uh, of course, I have my recorded lecture, as always, on Mikhail Gorbachev and Russia, or the Soviet Union during the Cold War, under Gorbachev's period of time. So this week, Gorbachev to Putin, our final week. I hope it's been a great class. I hope everyone's really enjoyed it. And I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you in another class of mine in the future. I'll see you in the discussion forum and maybe I'll see a couple of you in uh, the Zoom office hours this week. I just realized that I forgot to give everyone the factoid for our final week. Um, the factoid for this week is this. I'll make it quick because I know it was already a long announcement. The factoid is this. Pripyat, the ghost city that is associated with the nuclear meltdown at the nuclear reactor, the nuclear power plant, Chernobyl, which of course occurred in 1986 under the leadership of Mikhail Gorbachev when there was a nuclear catastrophe a meltdown and explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear facility located in northern Ukraine. And, of course, this explosion threw radioactive graphite particles well up into the atmosphere. A radioactive fire burned in the open air, sending radioactive particles and matter across Belarus and across northern Europe, all the way as far even as parts of the United Kingdom. This is something that, by the way, this is something that uh, Gorbachev did not openly expose. It was it was something like a week 
to 10 days before the Western world really even knew this was happening. And one of the things that actually sort of sounded the alarm bells was a discovery um, of, of, of radioactive poisoning in reindeer in uh, Scandinavia. I believe it was in Sweden. But it was either Sweden or, or it might have been Finland. But anyway, it was discovered by uh, individuals in Scandinavia. Finland's not technically part of Scandinavia. Anyway, that's different. Uh, but it was discovered before Gorbachev had even acknowledged that this had happened. And um, so the Soviet Union under Gorbachev still was not fully transparent. Chernobyl was a massive nuclear accident. And today, of course, the Chernobyl reactor is covered by a massive sarcophagus, and they've recently put they've recently put a new, larger sarcophagus on the older one. In fact, to contain the radioactive material um, that is is escaping, as 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 really there's still the smoldering radioactive fire there. As a result of that, the the city that was located adjacent to Chernobyl, to the nuclear power plant, was was Pripyat. And Pripyat was evacuated, and today it is a ghost city. And for individuals seeking sort of um, sort of off the beaten path, sort of like adventures and travel and history, Pripyat has become one of those locations that that people like to travel to. Actually, you can't stay there. It's a it's a it's a ghost city, and it's uh, still obviously a great deal of radioactive contamination. Uh, remains at Pripyat, uh, which was the city evacuated following the nuclear catastrophe at the Chernobyl reactor in Ukraine, which occurred in 1986 when a test, a nuclear, a normal test on the nuclear power plant, plant went wrong and caused a massive, a massive nuclear catastrophe. Today, only rivaled by the Fukushima Daiichi accident in Japan, um, in 2011. So factoid for this week, sorry, long announcement, Pripyat in northern Ukraine, uh, the city that is today a ghost city and a, uh, a reminder of, of, the, of the catastrophe at the Chernobyl nuclear reactor under Gorbachev. Let's have a great week, everyone. Email me that factoid, no later than Wednesday by midnight. Let's have a great week. Hopefully I'll see some of you in the Zoom office hours. Thanks, everyone.